Hello and welcome to the next of our IFRS basics sessions. We're going to look here at valuations using cash flows, specifically discounted cash flows. We did previously look at discounting an individual cash flow and unwinding the discount. But here we're really looking at a situation where we have several cash flows and we're going to use those cash flows to value an item. Now this is required in lots of different standards so that's why we're looking at it. Because if you can do this calculation you can use it for a great many different areas that may come up in the exam. So for example, one of the main ones will be IFRS 9 financial instruments, where perhaps you have to value a bond. That bond is going to pay interest and then capital. So we can discount those amounts to get the value of the bond, the true value to us as the investor. Or we may be looking at trying to get a fair value under IFRS 13. Remember, level three items in IFRS 13 may require us to do a discounted cash flow calculation to try to get the fair value of an item if we can't get any better information. IAS 17 leases, we have to bring in the value of an asset under the lease at the lower of the present value of the minimum lease payments or the fair value. So to get the present value of the minimum lease payments, we'll need to do this calculation to discount those lease payments. IAS 19 employee benefits, well, the liabilities under a pension will be the discounted cash flows on that. IAS 36 impairment, we may try to get the um, value in use of an item through discounted cash flows. So we'll see what that item will earn in terms of cash and then we'll discount those cash flows to get the value of the item. That's the value in use. And lastly, IAS 37 provisions, that tends to be a singular item but again we may have to discount it. So you can see that lots and lots of standards use this technique. So how do we actually do it? Well, we need to again use that discount factor we talked about in our previous session. Remember that was one over one plus the discount rate to the power of N, where the discount rate is given to you in the exam, maybe the cost of capital, and N is the number of years until we have to actually pay or the end of the actual calculation. So we multiply our cash flow by the discount factor and then we add all of those up and we get the valuation we're looking for. So a simple example of that, let's say we have a situation where we're asked what is the value of a three year, one million bond paying 10% interest per year. So we could get a valuation on that bond by discounting the cash flows we expect to receive on it. So we need a little table. The table will look like this. We have the year because it's a three year bond. The item because one year we'll have interest. In fact, three years we'll have interest and then the final year we'll have the capital repaid. The amount that that will be and then the discount factor that we will calculate. We'll multiply the amount by the discount factor to get the total. So for example, year one on the bond, we'll receive interest at 10%, which is 100,000. Multiplying that by the discount factor, well, it's one over one plus the discount rate, 10%. To the power of N, well, N is going to be one year here because we're going to receive that in one year. So that will give us 100,000 times the discount factor, 90,900. Year two, we do the same. We have interest of 100,000. This time, we do the same discount factor only to the power of two, because it's two years until we receive it. The same for year three to the power of three. And then finally, in year three, don't forget, we'll also get the capital repaid on the bond. So the interest payable in each of the three years at 10%, 100,000, 
plus the 1 million at the end. Now when we discount all of that and add it up, we get a valuation of 999,600. Very close to the 1 million, but not quite. So 999,600 would be the valuation. Now, why would that be important? Why would we have to calculate that in the exam? Well, let's say that we know the carrying value of the bond was 1 million. Well, just by giving us that information, the examiner could be leading us to do an impairment test on the bond. Because by looking at the valuation of 999,600, we can see that in actual fact, the bond is impaired by 400. Now that's a small amount, it might be a rounding difference, but you can see how that would be important in the exam. You can see that just by giving you that information, the examiner could be leading you towards doing an impairment test on the bond. So you would need to be able to do that calculation quickly and easily. So often by discounting the cash flows you expect to receive on an item and adding them up, you can get a valid valuation for that item. And as I've said, that is important in a number of standards. It's important to determine the fair value of something under IFRS 13. It's important to determine what value we bring a lease in at under IAS 17 because these, for example, would be the lease repayments we would discount and add up to get the value of the item to bring in at initially. For impairment, this would be the way we would do a value in use calculation to compare the value in use to the fair value less costs to get the recoverable amount on an item. And for provisions, we may well be um, discounting something to create a provision. So look, it's really important to learn that because as I've said, you can use it in lots of different areas on lots of different IFRS, but it's really simple to do, really easy to do once you've done it once. So do learn it and get yourself prepared for the exam.